Greetings, my fellow renegades. In this video, I'll explain why I use a HEPA filtered vacuum, and then I'll show you how to use it on carpets to dramatically improve your indoor air quality. And I'll prove that this technique works with a test. So most of you have probably at least heard of HEPA filters or high efficiency particulate filters. They're made of a randomly arranged mat of thin fibers of either polypropylene or glass. They're basically just really good at capturing particulate matter or PM. PM consists of solid particles and liquid droplets that can become suspended in the air and inhaled. Most people that know a little bit about HEPA filters think that they capture around 99% of PM, which is kind of true, but it's not the whole story. I'll explain because I do think it matters in a practical sense. Um, it depends what test standard you use, but I think this one best shows the physics of HEPA. It states that HEPA filters capture 99.995% of particles at the most penetrating particle size, or MPPS, which is around 0.2%. Two microns. MPPS is kind of an interesting concept. It's basically the size of particle that a filter struggles to capture the most. So a HEPA filter performs the worst at MPPS, but still captures 99.995% of particles of that size. But here's the part that makes HEPA filters especially special, and it's that they're even better at capturing particles both larger and smaller than MPPS. They capture virtually 100% of ultrafine particles and larger particles. What differentiates HEPA from other filters is how efficient they are at capturing these ultrafine particles, which can enter our bloodstream and cause cancers in the organ where they accumulate. This is why we're so concerned about capturing PM in the first place. According to the World Health Organization, scientific evidence shows a significant association between an increase in the levels of particulate matter and an increase in morbidity and mortality rates. So basically, the more PM you breathe, the more likely you are to become ill and to die. And I'm sorry to put it so bluntly like that, but I feel like we need to talk about this because so many people are chronically ill right now. Sometimes when I talk like this on my channel, I worry that it sounds like I'm just spreading fear, but I assure you, I'm bringing this up because I feel like it's my purpose on this earth to help ensure that your home only supports your health, never detracts from it. So at this point, if you're wondering if you have particulate matter in your home, yes, you do. We all do. It comes from countless sources. A lot of it comes from outdoor air pollution, and this is whether you live in a city or in the country. I used to live in a rural area, and before I moved there, I thought the outdoor air quality would be pretty much perfect all the time. But no, I mean, that really wasn't the case. There were plenty of days when there was wildfire smoke and industrial pollution, etc. Particulate can travel really far. And the winter was the worst time of year because byproducts from heating system combustion smelled so strong. And this was in a town with less than a thousand people. Don't get me wrong, in big cities, it's definitely way worse. But anyway, indoor sources of PM can come from cooking, from substances that our bodies shed like skin cells, mold, insects, rodents, and so much more. Every single kind of PM is harmful to breathe. It does not matter where it comes from. Whether it's from burning sage or car exhaust, doesn't matter. Don't worry though, because there are so many concrete steps you can take to reduce PM in your home. Welcome to the Healthy Home Guide. This is a place where I share practical, budget-friendly tips for creating a safe and healthy home, whether the word home refers to your house or your body. Please go ahead and like this video and subscribe, especially if you feel like more people should be aware of the information I'm sharing. It's common knowledge that vacuuming can improve indoor air quality. What's not common knowledge is that vacuuming can also decrease indoor air quality. I'll explain. Many research studies have demonstrated that vacuums without a HEPA filter can drastically increase the number of particles in the room, while vacuums with HEPA filters do not. Here's a graph from one of those studies that compares particle concentration before, during, and after vacuuming. As you can see, the bagless, wet, and bagged vacuums all spewed absurd amounts of filth into the air, while the HEPA vac did not. So at this point, you're probably either grateful that you have a HEPA vac, or maybe you're considering buying one. But wait a second, before you go on Amazon and buy the cheapest but highest rated HEPA vac you can find, I wanna tell you that HEPA vacs are not created equal. 
cheap vacuums tend not to be properly sealed, so dirty air can bypass the filter and get blown into your home. The HEPAVAC I have is Mila's Complete C3 Kalima Powerline. There are other good brands and models as well, so do your research about air sealing and keep in mind that you'll probably have to spend at least 500 to 600 USD. But it's not enough to have a good HEPAVAC. You have to know how to use it properly. So let's talk about carpets. They are sinks for particulate, meaning they collect it. And whenever carpets get walked on, they release a puff of particulate. To make matters worse, most people don't know how to vacuum a carpet the right way. Here's how. Use a floor head with a suction impelled brush roll. The vacuum I recommended comes with one. A suction impelled brush roll is basically a brush whose rotation is powered by the vacuum's airstream. It agitates carpets and releases trapped particles. Suction impelled works best on low to medium pile carpet. This is important. Do not confuse suction impelled with motorized brush heads. These use electricity to power the motor that spins the brush roll. Instead of motorized, I prefer suction impelled to ensure that all the disturbed particles will be pulled into the vacuum and not scattered into the air. I'll explain. Suction impelled uses only the power of the airstream, so if the vacuum is restricted or clogged, the brush roll spins slower, which eliminates a situation where the brush roll is dirtying the air while the vacuum isn't sucking hard enough. Now I'm going to show you a particulate monitor test I did to assess the efficacy of Mila's Turbo Brush floor head. So I just vacuumed this carpet thoroughly with a universal floor head without a suction impelled brush roll and had been using that regularly for the whole time I've lived here. So at the time of filming this, I'd actually never used the brush roll on this carpet. This is a Dylos DC 1100 Pro for measuring the particulate levels before and after agitating the carpet. The number on the left is smaller particles and the number on the right is larger particles. As you can see, we've settled at around 79 and 23. So now I'll agitate the carpet like you would when walking down the stairs. So right off the bat, we see that particulates rising pretty dramatically, and let's see where it plateaus. Okay, so around 420 and 212. And for the first time since I moved in here, I'm gonna use a suction impelled brush roll to vacuum this carpet. And now I'll test again, and we're at roughly 58 and 16. After agitating, we're jumping, but not as dramatically, and we settle at around 229 and 92, roughly half what we had last time and I'll vacuum again with the suction impelled brush roll. We're testing again now, and so we're at 63 and 22 roughly. So we increase a little bit, only slightly, to a plateau of around 88 and 36, which is an incredible reduction in particulate puffs compared to just using a regular floor head without a brush roll. So 420 and 212 before versus 88 and 36 after. But what do you do if you have a high pile carpet? Honestly, if you're someone with environmental sensitivities, your best option is probably just to remove all carpets and rugs, especially high pile. If that's not an option for you, other than a professional steam cleaning, a suction impelled brush roll is probably your safest bet. Although if your carpet is especially deep or your vacuum is on the cheaper end, the vacuum may struggle and could potentially damage the carpet, so be careful. Most suction impelled floor heads aren't really intended for high pile carpets. As an aside, I want to be clear that HEPA vacuuming is for removing dust, not for cleaning up like liquid spills like if your pet has an accident. How do you vacuum hard surfaces? Well, you use the highest suction setting possible and a bare floor brush head. The vacuum I recommended comes with one. Here's a final tip I want to say to make sure you're actually buying a genuine HEPA filter. Ask the company for the filter scan test report. They should have no problem providing you with that if their filters are authentic. So here's what we learned today that HEPA filters are the gold standard in particle capture, that HEPA vacuums prevent particles on surfaces from being dispersed into your home's air, and that you should use a suction impelled brush roll to remove dust from carpets. Here's a shout out to the five countries that watched my content the most this past month, the US, Canada, the UK, India, and Germany. If you don't live in those countries, I still see you and appreciate you. If you watch this far, comment, I love to agitate carpets. Anyway, I hope I earned your subscription today by helping you learn something. If you learned something, please like this video. Don't be afraid to comment and ask me anything you want. And if you're able to donate to my channel, please do so at the link at the bottom of the description. And finally, my fellow renegades, I salute you.